All right, we are back. Hello and welcome back to another Instagram Live and Artist Stories. I'm Tara Bahab, founder of Louder Society. Louder Society is a nonprofit organization that enhances health through arts and creativity. Uh, we've been in the city of Calgary since 2015, and throughout this time, we have uh, provided several different pub public art projects, programs, and events. We also have two uh, educational YouTube channels. Uh, one of them is called 1001 Nights, it's in Persian. Uh, which calls Hazari Akshab, and that's mainly because the Persian community has been very supportive of our activities so far. And the other one is under the name of Loud Art Society itself, uh, where all of these uh, Instagram live uh, artist stories and some of our other content is being shared. So I hope that you subscribe to both of these channels so you will be notified about any new video that comes out from uh, Loud Art Society. Today we have another amazing artist that uh, who will be joining us uh, shortly uh, from Brooklyn, New York. Actually, he's a visual artist, John Coffelt, and um, he had some troubles uh, finding us uh, here and just entering the live. Uh, I hope that he can find us now, and uh, so we can uh, start our conversation with him and enjoy listening to his artist journey. Um, all right, we have so many people. Oh, here, John is finally here. Okay. There I am. <laughs> okay, great. I'm sorry. You figured it out. <laughs> okay, here we go. Awesome. Hi, John. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you guys? I'm doing great. Thank you very much for joining us here. So I'm just going right, to jump in to my first question and uh, allow you to introduce yourself for us. Please let us know uh, where were you born and um, where are you living right now? What kind of art do you make? Uh, well, I was born in Tennessee, in the, in the East Tennessee Mountains. Uh, I grew up in an area that is uh, kind of small and everybody kind of knows everybody else. And I feel like... Um, I feel like, you know, we're all family, so that's good. Um, the kind of artwork that I do um, is postmodern modern abstractionism. Um, a lot of it has to do with um, uh, chaos and order and order and chaos. I like to do a lot of work with, you know, my hands. A lot of my work is about repetition. Um, I do these, this series called Cosmos. Mm -hmm. And they're dots, and they start from the center and radiate out to the edges. And depending on the size of the canvas, I go out as far as I can go. But in my head, they're going out into infinity. Um, I also do work with duct tape. Duct tape's one of the things that I've been working with for a long time, about three or four years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, try to, uh, I try to make these pieces that are sort of like a circuitry so that you can go inside and try to find out what my methodologies are. Every piece is very different, and I attack it in a very different way. Um, I think that, you know, the colors and everything that I use are usually very bright, and mm -hmm. I feel like uh, what I'm trying to do is bring the person, the viewer, inside. Very nice. Awesome. So, uh, John, um, why and how did you start making art? I started making art when I was around eight years old when I saw my grandfather working on these little figures that were birds and trees, and he would paint them in to make them look like that. And I started painting right beside him. And uh, he would paint something large, and I would paint something smaller. And he always wanted me to do realism because he always said that I had to paint what was on the outside before I painted what's on the inside. So I, I grew up thinking, you know, I... Probably, I didn't know what I was going to do, but art became, you know, about the only thing I was good at. So uh, I felt like I just stayed with art. <laughs> That's a very good choice, for sure. <laughs> That's very interesting, as you say, you know, you have to learn uh, to paint the outside before you can learn to how to paint the inside. That's a very well said. Nobody, uh, I haven't heard it to be said this way, but it's so true. Um, so, uh, John, uh, you know, uh, our organization is mainly focused on the health benefits that uh, any creative uh, practice of any creative activity can bring for Do you believe that your creative uh, practice has any uh, benefits on your health at all? 
Uh, yes, it's kind of like therapy to me. My my Cosmo work, especially the repetition, sort of draws my you know me inside my work, and uh, because uh, I do want to focus, I try to bring that focus uh, to the viewer so that they focus also. Uh, you sort of zero into the center, and if I'm if I'm doing it correctly, then it goes to the you know their eyeballs go to the center, and then they start to understand that I'm trying to slow them down, like slow them down from the reality around them. And that's sort of what it does for me. I can go inside of myself and um, I really like it there. It's sort of like when, you know, when I get into, uh, um, you know, my head and I can stay there for as long as it takes. That's very interesting. Thank you. Um, so what is the theme of your artworks? And uh, do you know how many pieces have you created? Do you even count your pieces? Uh, I've created probably a little over 2,000 at this point. Uh, I, th I feel like I'm very prolific. Uh, my artwork is about chaos and order and order and chaos. Uh, I feel like um, sometimes people don't understand what I'm trying to do until I completely finish it because I don't know what is going to happen. So I just continue doing it. Uh, what's, what's chaos and order? That's... Um... Do you find yourself, while, while this is the theme of your artwork, do you find that in your life too, or it's only uh, for your artwork? It's only for my artwork. I try to get all of the chaos out in my artwork. I'm kind of very low key. I don't like a lot of drama. And New York's so drama that every so often I have to do a cosmos uh, just to slow down and calm down and cool off and you know have my way with what I need to do. That's very interesting. Um, so, um, okay, here's my next question to you. Would you like to collaborate with other artists? Um, I, I do collaborate sometimes. It's very rarely. I collaborated with this one lady named Carolyn Wade. We took two years and did her house and created like an art space. And every room was completely different, but it was a total collaboration between the two of us. Great, great. Um... What is your perspective on art and creativity in general? My perspective is, I feel like um, I feel like if somebody feels like they have to do art, then they should re be doing art, whether they do it at, for a living or not, because I think that it allows us to express ourselves and express mm -hmm. ourselves in a way that's very unique. I feel like also that uh, when when I'm doing my work. Uh, I want people to understand it, but I think that other people, when they do their work, they want the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, they want to be understood, and uh, being an artist, uh, you know, I'm creative, and so everything that I do is uh, in a creative way, but with my, my, my practice, I want to, people to understand that um, what I'm doing is important to me, and I'm not necessarily doing art for anybody else. I'm just doing it for me. It's hard for me to understand why artists uh, do the work that they do uh, for other people. I don't think that I've ever uh, really understood that. But um, that's kind of where my head is. Oh, you mean like the commissioned artworks? Yeah, yes. I take commissions on Cosmos. I let people... Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they select the background color and the dots, and then I can do those, but that's kind of like therapy for me. I can do that all day long. Uh, but the other pieces, the tape pieces, I can't do commissions because I don't know what they're going to look like when I'm finished. So I usually finish one, and then, you know, I put it on uh, social media and let people see what they think. Sometimes I get really good feedback on direct messages, and um, I look forward to that. Nice. So uh, do you have any of uh, these uh, uh, doctor works that you mentioned on your Instagram page as well? Uh, yes, I put in, uh, work on Instagram uh, quite a bit. Uh, okay. One of the things that I do is uh, I put it on Facebook first and then usually Instagram. And um, I try to do a little description on Instagram so that people know what they're looking at. Okay. Interesting. That's great. Um, um, what are you working on right now? Uh, another piece that is uh, duct, duct tape. I started in the center with the duct tape, and the idea for the duct tape pieces came from Cosmos. I start with one color piece in the center that's a particular shape, 
and I continue that particular shape in a spiral, a large spiral, mm -hmm. and then I keep adding to it until they fall together and then everything falls apart. And then I have to decide what to do next. That's interesting. Yeah, I was uh, looking at uh, some of those, uh, the, the Cosmos works that you're mentioning right now uh, last night, and uh, I, I found them really intriguing and interesting. It does draw the viewer right inside the work from the center and just firing it. It's very interesting, very interesting optical illusion too that it creates. Uh, very impressive work for sure. Uh, what, what are the dimensions of these artworks? Um, I usually work 24 by 24. All of my work is square. For some reason, I just find it a lot easier to work with. A lot of artists say, you know, how can you do square? Because they don't know what to do when they walk up to it. But I don't know what to do if it weren't square. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I do 24 by 24 all the way up to uh, 48 by 48. But I also do 60 by 60, but I've only done a few of those because they really hurt my back. I have to hang out over the work and I paint it uh, so that the, each of the dots is sort of like a relief. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Uh, you also showed me another work of yours with the uh, mini clothing. Uh, what was the story behind that one? The miniature clothing started in 1993. Uh, my grandfather had passed, and I asked for the pajamas that he wore while he, you know, when he passed. And I kept them under my bed a while, and my mom thought it was kind of weird that I would do that. And she kept asking, and I thought, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something with them. And I remember playing Barbie dolls when I was a little boy with my grandfather, and he used to make the little clothes for me. And I thought, what if I take the pajamas and make little clothes out of them? Not for a Barbie doll, but to just miniaturize them uh, with the feeling of, you know, uh, the person who owned them before, uh, you know, they can express themselves through the little work. Nice. Uh, and how many of those little miniature clothes did you make? I've done probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 400. Uh, and then and I, they're all hand done uh, by hand. I never use a yeah. machine. Wow. And uh, you uh, present them on uh, like a surface, uh, like a painting? How were you presenting them? I usually put them on tiny clotheslines that go from one side to the other, and uh, it creates sort of like a communion, you know, a communion between the pieces because mm -hmm. they, uh, they relate to each other, even though all these pieces, a lot of them are commissioned. Uh, you know, when you put them together in a group, they sort of have a conversation, and they're, it's always different. When I send them out to a gallery, I don't know what the gallery is going to do with them, and I don't ask them to do anything in particular. I just ask that they put them up. Nice. Very interesting. Um, so what are your recommendations for those people who want to start making art and become professional? The first thing I'll tell them is, uh, you know, to believe in yourself, but that's very, you know, that's a common, that's a common answer. But I really believe that you have to have other people around you that can really prod you and, and, you know, and support you in a lot of ways, especially collectors, uh, mm -hmm. critics, you have to have these people in place or you can't do anything. And I've always believed in that. Um, I know that uh, I've had many, many people over the years that have helped me in my work. And, um, you know, without them, I wouldn't be here. One is mm -hmm. Carolyn Wade that, you know, I was talking about earlier with, mm -hmm. when I was doing the, uh, you know, the collaboration. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the Sokol family, uh, the Barrett family, all these people have been really kind to me and they've done a lot of, you know, a lot of stuff for me, and, you know, they sort of put me on my way. Um, I can name a ton of people, Mia, Mia Fitterman. Um, uh, it, the, it just goes on. A lot of these people, they buy work over and over again, and they have larger collections um, um, of my work. They just continue to collect it, and that's a big help to me. Definitely. Um, uh, now, these were the people who definitely did uh, encourage you and support you. Who were you most inspired by for your uh, artworks? Uh, the person? Uh, yeah. I'd be between... <laughs> 
between two people, probably my grandfather and again, Carolyn Wade, because she did something for me that nobody else did. She introduced me to all of her friends. She made sure that uh, I made, you know, she made the right introductions to the right people. And uh, she, you know, she's been very, she was a big part of my life and she just recently passed and, mm -hmm. and it was a really hard thing for me to deal with. And, um, but, you know, she was a really large part of that and, and also my grandfather. I'm very sorry for your loss. It must be difficult, especially when someone shows so much support and uh, they're no longer there. But I'm right. glad that you benefited from, from that relationship. So that's great. Thank you. Um, here's my next question to you, John. Uh, if you could change anything about yourself, what would that be? Um, if I could change anything about myself, uh, I would give myself the power to go backwards, you know, like to time travel. Mm -hmm. I think that I would go back to when I was a little boy and tell myself that it's okay to, to want to, to have something more and to, to really push yourself and, you know, to broaden my perspectives about what's, you know, out there and, and the way I feel about things uh, would, would develop and allow me to be an artist. Um, I would just like to tell that little boy that it's possible and just keep working on it and be, you know, be happy. I'm just making some notes from that. That was beautifully said. So my next question, I think you kind of uh, touched on it <laughs> by asking yeah. this question, but the next question was that uh, if, if you could have a superpower, what would that be? Would you still choose the time travel? Yes, I would. Okay. I certainly would choose it, yes. Awesome. So um, I'm actually getting to my last question here. Um, uh, where our viewers can uh, reach out to you or view your works other than Instagram? Do you have a website and uh, what is it? Yes, I have a website. It's www.joncoffelt.com, uh, .com, and I'm also on Instagram. And um, and LinkedIn and also uh, with um, with Facebook. Uh, when people get in touch with my work, they they look, usually look me up, and sometimes they come over and look at the work. But a lot of times they buy the work, you know, like by sight instead of seeing the work. Uh, so I've been very fortunate with that. I try to set my website up like a store, and uh, so people can look over what you know whatever they're interested in. That's great. Awesome. Well, um, I'm out of my questions, John. If you have anything else you would like to add, please go ahead. Feel free to say. Okay. Well, one thing I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm sorry that everything was crazy at the beginning. Uh, but um, other than that, I, I feel like, you know, um, I'm okay. You know, I've done a lot of work in the in the past. I mean, I may not be Warhol or whatever, but I've certainly been able to make a living at it. And that's mm -hmm. really what it's all about for me is I've been able to put all my energy into trying to make a living, but at the mm -hmm. same time doing what I want. I, I've never really compromised and I've never really had to. So uh, I feel like in a lot of ways I've been very fortunate. Uh, a lot of people call it luck, but I really don't believe in luck. I believe that if you're prepared and something comes along, then then and it's right for you, then you should go ahead and pursue it. You know, just trust your your intuition. Uh, I think a lot of times uh, that I've faltered a little bit, and then I'm like, I go backwards, and I'm like, um, okay, John, just trust the universe. Everything's going to work out. It always will. My grandfather had this saying that this too shall pass. Even if it's really bad, he would say it. And if it was, you know, really good, he would say it. Because, you know, we have to live in the moment. And um, I think that art has a lot to do with that. It's about you expressing yourself at the time you're doing the work. And I know that when I do the Cosmos paintings, sometimes I get the the dots really close together and it changes. It looks like it changes the background. But the backgrounds are always one color. And people are like, oh, you did yellow with, with a little bit of orange. And it's like, no, that that happens to be your brain telling you that something's changed. And it's only the largeness of the dots or the smallness of the dots or the space between them that causes the change. But, um, you know, that's that's where my head is. And that's 
that's what I'll continue to do is probably the duct tape pieces. I may develop some more painterly style work. And uh, of course, I'll be doing the, the cosmos. Yeah, uh, very nicely said. I actually, um, uh, I agree with what you said and not leaving in luck. Because uh, if you're putting the work, if you're putting effort and not saying that you have to always work hard, uh, obviously, you need balance in life as well. You need to uh, enjoy life as well. You need to have fun. Uh, everything is right. necessary enough for having a good life. Um, but yes, as you said, uh, if you are prepared for things, if you have been putting the work, everything should uh, fall into its place and it's working on. And as you said again, uh, this shall pass too, whether good or bad. So enjoy yeah. it while it lasts. <laughs> That's right. That's how I feel about it. Yes. Well, well, I think it was a very good, uh, short but uh, sweet talk. Uh, you were very quick, even though it was difficult for you to find how to get into the live. I would like to take the time and thank you so very much for accepting my invitation and giving me your time and uh, coming to this uh, live interview. Uh, I really enjoyed this uh, conversation and uh, learning about your journey as an artist. Um, uh, this video will be saved on our IGTV also uh, later on. I will be uploading it on our YouTube channel and uh, you will be able to uh, view it on YouTube as well and share the link uh, on your social media pages. And so please do subscribe to our U YouTube channel and uh, that way you will also be notified when a new video is being released uh, from Louder Society. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And thank you so much for letting me do this. It's been fun, and I'm sorry that it took a little bit to get into the to the space, but you know, I, I finally did it. Thank goodness, with your help. But um, no I want to tell everybody, you know, that uh, that I'm I'm continuing to do my work, and I uh, I probably will falter along the way, but you can always count on me to do artwork because that's really the the best thing I can do. You know, the only thing I, I'm really good at. So. Uh, uh, thank you so much again, and I appreciate it. Thank you so very much. Uh, yeah, I, I was really happy to have you, and I hope that you do continue making art, and I'm looking forward to see more of your beautiful artworks. I will share some of your artworks uh, after this live. Thanks to everyone who joined us uh, here today, and uh, thank you very much for your patience with uh, <laughs> both of us here. <laughs> uh, we'll have some more uh, Instagram live stories next week, so stay with us. Uh, other than that, thank you very much again, and goodbye. Bye, John. Bye. Take care. Take care.